Welcome to How Inez Rolls. I am so glad you're here. I have Ezra with me. And I'm gonna tell you what he's doing here. So the other day I was asking Ezra, what is the perfect meal for a seven-year-old? And luckily I have a seven-year-old right here. So what did you tell me? Cookies and pizza. Cookies and pizza, that does sound really good. But I'm gonna show you how to make pizza from scratch and I'm gonna make the dough. How's that sound? Good. And I thought, I haven't done cowboy cookies on the channel, so I thought, let's make cowboy cookies and maybe you can help me with that. Yep. Yeah, do you think you're gonna eat lots of pizza? Yep. Yep, what is your favorite kind of pizza? Pepperoni. Pepperoni. So I'm going to go to the store right now and pick up a few of the items that we're going to need to make this meal come be a dinner in the next couple of days. So the next time you'll see us in the kitchen, we're probably going to, it'll be a different day and you'll be ready to help, right? Yep. Okay, so I need to go to Vaughn's and I'm going to take you with me. All right, we're just heading into Vaughn's right now to just pick up those few things that I need to make that seven-year-old's perfect meal. All right, so for the pizzas, we're gonna get these for Paul, since he, these are gluten-free, so that'll be the gluten-free alternative for that pizza for Paul. So we're gonna need some pecans. I wish they were chopped, but that's okay. I can take care of that. And some more semi-sweet chocolate chips. We're gonna make some yummy, cowboy cookies and then last but not least i picked up some ham and some pepperoni that's turkey pepperoni because they ain't got the other stuff and then some mozzarella so i think we're ready for this meal so now i can't wait to get started so hang tight it's coming up right now so today is the day it's pizza cookie day for you so yep. This seven-year-old's gonna help me a little bit in the kitchen, and of course, he wants to help with the cookies. So what we're gonna do right now is, um, I have everything out ready, easy for him to help me pour it in. Isn't that great? So the recipe that I'm using is called The Perfect Cowboy Cookies by the stay-at-home chef. Her name's Rachel, and I love her. If you're not following her on Instagram, she's amazing. And let's get started. We have to mix butter and sugar. Can you do it? Let's do this. So I have to have Ezra standing on a chair because I'm wearing shoes that are like, makes me this much taller. He goes, they're gonna think I'm so small. No, I'm just ginormously tall today. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start off with butter and I'll do that first because it can be a little sticky sometimes. So softened butter, two sticks, and then you wanna take the sugars and dump them in. Ezzy? Right here, yep. I all. All of it. I'll bring it closer to you. Right yeah, that's brown sugar and white and white granulated sugar. Yes. Oh, is that all it? That's it. Wow. So we're just gonna mix that till it's creamy and then we'll keep going. So we've just creamed up the butter and the sugars and now we're gonna add three eggs and two teaspoons of vanilla. Um, pretty easy. Um, the three quarters of a cup brown sugar and I believe it was a half a cup of granulated sugar. So we're just gonna mix that up too. Why does it smell so good? Because vanilla makes everything smell even better. <laughs> Next up is the dry ingredients. We have two and, um, two and three quarters cup of flour. Did you wanna help me with this, Ezzy? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a spoon and you can kind of brush it in, scoop it in there. Ooh, this like also has a so tea soft. it's so soft yeah it also has a teaspoon of baking powder and baking soda and a half a teaspoon of salt oh my let's keep it going this is where it's going to start looking kind of doughy oh that means our oven is ready for preheating uh. it's at Ow. 400 degrees so a little bit warmer than normal here i'll get the rest out but there's some on the thing the next will be the, the topping, or the, the stuff that's gonna make it extra special for cowboy cookies. 
Can I eat one of the chocolate chips? Yes, you can eat one of the chocolate chips. Yeah. All right, let's get the other stuff in. Let's do the cup of oatmeal. It says it suggests quick oats. Oops. Oh my gosh, bring this a little bit. <gasps> Whoops. Oh yeah, big thing. Let me turn in. Okay, go ahead. It suggests quick oats, but I only have old fashions. And then let's add the coconut. Three quarters of a cup. Do you want to do it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, coconut's so good. I love oh, it. Oh, that just fell. It just fell. Okay, let's get the bag of uh, pecans. I did have to crush those up. Remember, I went to the store and bought them. Mm -hmm. Do you think you can just dump them, or do you want me to do it? I'll do it. All right, go ahead. So it's not quite a cup. It's three quarters. Just, so just, just dump, dump the whole up. thing. There you go. I am such a fan of pecans. They're my favorite. And then the best part, obviously the best part to Ezra because he wanted to have some. Here, let me get a, a spoon. I'll hold the bowl and then you can use a spoon to push it in. Now it calls for semi-sweet chocolate chips, but I didn't have two cups. So it's like a, about a half a cup of milk chocolate, but two cups of chocolate chips. All right, and then we're just gonna blend that up, get ready to cook. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh. It looks so good. We just finished blending this up. And it makes a lot of dough, you guys. So you can make them as big as you want. This recipe says that it will make 12. Those are ginormous cookies. Are you ready to have a huge cookie? Yeah. All right, let's start getting this ready. <laughs> so you can see lots there. It's all kind of like, it's got lots of texture to it. And what we're gonna do is split this recipe in half. Have you ever had a cowboy cookie before? No. I believe I have a few times. I don't even know why they call them cowboy cookies. Oh, I don't know either. I actually was looking at the recipe and they thought it might be because it might be like back in the day, cowboys wanted like a power bar or like a-, a, a oh, cookie. <laughs> yeah, so they threw it all into a cookie. But back then, it was in the 1800s, and um, it wasn't like chocolate chip cookies were invented like in the 1900s. So I don't even think that that's completely truthful, but makes for a good story. So we're gonna get, I'm gonna try to get three out of this. Let me see. Three on this side. Yeah, they're gonna be very big. So we're gonna get six on each. I think you have to cut mine in half. <laughs> And then I'll eat it. <laughs> so I lost my helper, but that's okay because this is kind of the boring part. It just has to cook. So it says to put six on here, but when I put the six, it seemed a little bit big and I was worried that they might like spread into each other. So I'm just gonna cook four at a time and it'll just have another batch when they're done. So these are gonna go in at 400 for 10 to 12 minutes. Now, if you're doing it smaller, where are you gonna make 24? Probably about eight minutes. Batch number one just came out and they smell so good. So oh, I better get the next ones out. So it's a good chunky cookie and I can't wait to try it. Let's give you an up close and personal, shall we? Calling Ezra down to come take a look and to taste. Look at those cookies. Of the first one here, which one should we cut and taste? This one. Okay, let's do it. All right, so let me show you up close. Look at all that chocolate, all the pieces, all the texture. Go ahead, try. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is the perfect cowboy cookie. <laughs> what do you think? Good. You like that one? So I did end up making 12 large ones. So they have a big calorie count, just so you know. So you can only have one per day, only one. <laughs> so I'm now we're going to do, we're gonna make the homemade pizza dough for dinner tonight. Let's do this. So it is time to make some pizza dough. I didn't even have to put my mixer away because I'm gonna need it. So pretty much this beginning part is pretty simple. You're just putting warm water with the yeast and some sugar to let it start to bubble and activate the, um, the yeast. And so then we'll start adding the flour slowly to it. So 
warm water, like, you know, the warm, the, the water, not scalding hot, like what you would bathe the baby in. That's kind of what I was always kind of told. So let me get that going and I'll show you what it looks like when that, that change happens, you know, science experiments and all. It's been about five or so minutes, maybe closer to 10. And you can see that the bloom is happening with the yeast. It's kind of fun to watch. If you can get it to like, if you can get a good angle, you can start seeing it like kind of come out from under the water. It's pretty interesting. So now we're going to add some salt and some oil and start adding the flour in one cup at a time. There are tons of pizza dough recipes online. The one that I'm using is from Kristen at um, Little Luna. And so I love her uh, website and I love her Instagram. She has very printable, friendly um, recipes. And I use a lot of them on the channel because they're just that good, you guys. So of course I know that this is gonna be delicious. This is going to take six cups of flour. So we're gonna put them in, like I said, one at a time. And then I'm gonna change that to the hook and then knead it for eight minutes. So I am also going to be linking this recipe in the description box so you can go to it as well. So let's do this. So here is the awesome dough. It smells yeasty, it has a good elasticity. Um, so we're just gonna let it sit here and rest for 30 minutes. So if you're planning to make pizza dough, you're gonna need to give yourself some time for dough to rise. So I'm just going to cover that up, let it sit there for 30 minutes while I start getting the toppings ready and I'm gonna show you how I get my sauce ready. So what I'm doing is just taking my favorite spaghetti sauce, which I'm just using some Prego and I'm just starting to condense it down. Spaghetti sauces tend to have more water in them. And so if you, that's fine if you wanna put it on a pizza, I've done it many times. But if you kinda of want your sauce to stay, we're going to reduce it down just a little bit so it's got a thicker consistency and it'll stay on the pizza. You might be thinking, Inez, that has lots of gluten in it for, how can Paul do that? So I got him some gluten-free uh, pizza crust. We use these all the time, so. He likes them. Oh, uh, there's two in here. I think it was like $6 for both. So I'll make them both for him. And if he has leftovers, he can take them for lunch tomorrow. So Paul's taken care of. Okay, so I have everything set up. I have a floured board, my rolling pin, my greased pan. And I just wanted to show you what 30 minutes did. Wow, that's like doubled in size. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm not going to make big pizzas. I'm gonna make much smaller ones. So that way we could have like some individual ones or we could have like pieces of each other's. So we're gonna get this going and I'm gonna bring out some of this dough. All right, so here we are on a floured surface and I'm just gonna roll that out. Really easy, you guys. So that's my oven. The oven has to be pretty hot, like 500 degrees hot. And so what we're gonna do is give this a pre-cook for about five minutes, and then we're gonna come back around and put the toppings on. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it's almost better if it's more rustic. I'm gonna put it on my baking sheet and poke some holes in it. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a brush with some butter. You could do olive oil, but I think having a little bit of butter, and you could even season the butter, like put a little dash of garlic, that would make it super good. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like after five minutes. Okay, so this is after five minutes. It's not all the way cooked, but you can see it's starting to form. I even had a little bit of a crust on one of the sides. And so now I'm just going to put sauce, cheese, any toppings you want, and put it back in there probably around five-ish more minutes. We want that cheese to melt nicely. Hey, right, here it is, everyone. Look at all of these little pizzas. Plus, we can't forget dessert. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so these two over here are gluten-free, and I think we're ready to eat. Nice. So we 
just finished dinner and man, that was so good, huh? Yeah. I really liked the crust. Kristen knocked that out of the park with that recipe. I'll link that below. And those cookies, what'd you think? They are good. So good. I also like the pizza, but I have a wiggly too, so I, I can eat on this side, so I can eat on this side. <laughs> but was it everything you wanted it to be? Yes. Was it your favorite meal ever? Yes. <laughs> so thanks for stopping by the channel. Give it a thumbs up and let Ezra know that he, what you thought about what his favorite meal was about. Stick around, rollers. You just never know what I'll be rolling out next. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!